Today on BRS TV, we're going to tell you why T5 lighting is one of the best options for the reef tank. Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the BRS 160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160 gallon reef tank. Today's episode is the second of five where we really explore lighting in the reef tank. In this one, we're going to focus on T5 lighting. Before we get too far into this, I think we should note if there's one form of lighting the team here at BRS has witnessed the most success with over the last decade, it's absolutely T5 fluorescence. When I say the most success, I'm focusing on only one element, and that's maintaining a healthy, colorful, growing reef tank where the corals thrive in almost any area of the tank with excellent color and growth patterns. However, there's pros and cons to every light source, so we're going to start with that, then evaluate T5 lighting based on the criteria we shared last week, including some really cool tests we performed based on that criteria, discuss some hybrid options, explore which type of reefer T5 lighting is ideal for, and finish with some really interesting details on heat-related performance and some other operating tips. I'll start with the pros. The biggest advantage of T5 lighting is the thin bulbs and reflectors provide an ultra diffused form of light, which provides the most even distribution of light of any popular light source for the reef tank. Nothing else provides this type of even intensity, both horizontally and vertically. With the right quantity of bulbs, T5 lighting also provides more than enough intensity or par for even high demand SPS tanks. In fact, many of the most impressive SPS tanks out there are running on T5 lit tanks, and there's good reason for this. First, the even distribution of light allows the coral colonies to grow in attractive uniform shapes that are predictable and easy to aquascape. More focused forms of light tend to result in corals growing towards or away from lighting hotspots with unpredictable or odd coral shapes. Second, the branching and plating nature of many SPS corals means they easily shadow not only each other, but also the innermost portions of themselves and the underside of the coral. The even diffuse lighting T5 provides drastically reduces the shadowing and maximizes the upwelling light from the sand to not only keep the coral's tissue healthy, but also maintains a nice uniform bright color on the entire coral rather than browning out or receding on the innermost layers. Another big advantage of T5 is a low intimidation factor. The fixtures are super easy to install and you don't have to be very concerned about spectrum options because the bulb manufacturers have already done that for you and we've all witnessed the proven results. While there are advanced options, most are simple plug and play fixtures without the need for a computer, phone application, or learning programming logic. All you need is a timer and an outlet to be successful. Most T5 installs also produce minimal heat, and in most instances, heat doesn't need to be managed at all, or can be managed with something as simple as increasing evaporation with some additional surface flow or a fan. Last major pro is the low initial cost of most installs. There's some pretty affordable fixtures or retrofit kits out there. T5 is easily the lowest initial cost option where you can be sure you're going to be able to produce a pretty epic tank. Okay, so how about the cons and the reasons why reefers have gravitated away from T5 lighting over the last decade? The biggest is probably while the initial cost is low, the ongoing cost is likely higher than newer LED options over a five or ten year period because of slightly increased power consumption and the requirement that you need to buy replacement bulbs. Second, most reefers also like the shimmer provided by metal halides and LED lighting. The shimmer tends to bring the tank to life, adds a cool dynamic, and the intense ribbons of shimmering light probably have some coral health benefits as well. LED options are also just a more trendy, cool technology because they're capable of so much flexibility, color options, intensity adjustments, and come in a smaller form factor. It's hard for an established technology like T5 fluorescent bulbs to compete with something new and fun like LEDs, especially if you're newer to the hobby or haven't really put a lot of time or thought into considering what it is we're really trying to achieve with lighting the reef tank that goes beyond cool features and form factor. Now that we have a high level understanding of T5 lighting on a reef tank, let's use that criteria and rating system we developed last week, starting with the ability to provide adequate life support to the ecosystem in our reef tanks with enough direct intensity or par, enough diffuse lighting in the proper spectrum. Overall, we give T5 lighting a 9.6 in the ability to support life, which is likely higher than we're going to give any other form of lighting as an independent lighting solution. 
As concerned to direct light, overall intensity and par, we gave T5 lighting a 9 out of 10 based on our test results. It might seem kind of odd considering T5 doesn't seem like a very directional source of light. However, with the right quantity of bulbs and well-designed reflectors, you can achieve the same or even significantly higher intensity or par than sources that some might consider directional, like LEDs or halides with smaller reflectors. Only reason we didn't give it a 10 is because some more focused halide reflectors and LED options can produce some pretty intense PAR ratings appropriate for really deep tanks. To give relevance to all this and more detailed info on overall PAR output, we set up this 2 foot deep 30 by 30 inch demo tank to test the PAR output. We used a Lecor 1500 PAR meter with underwater sensors and a total of 36 measuring points at a depth of 18 inches, which is the lowest we could measure with a Lecor waterproof probe and cable. Everyone has a different idea how much PAR is considered intense. And how much is enough is really relative to the type of tank you want to maintain. So rather than focus on a specific PAR rating, we're going to share T5's performance in comparison to some options reefers typically consider as fairly intense light with the 250 watt 10K XM bulb and by far the most popular halide option with the 250 watt radium. Both mounted in a larger reflector typical to a halide only install with a Luxcore ballast. To compare the overall intensity or power potential of T5 bulbs, we use an 8-bulb, 2-foot ATI sun power fixture, which is only 192 watts of power. Bulb selection is going to play a big role in intensity, but for this demo, we used 8 ATI Aqua Blue Specials to demonstrate the potential with one of the most popular bulb brands on our site. At a depth of 18 inches, the 192 watts of T5s had a maximum power of over 280, which is significantly higher than the 161 achieved by the radium and 197 by the XM10K bulb. Overall perception that halides provide more power or higher intensity in standard depth tanks is likely a bit exaggerated, certainly not when compared on a watt-for-watt -watt basis. One thing you'll notice about power distribution with a halide reflector like this is bulb placement is super important. For example, the radium bulb is fairly short and because of that we weren't able to center the primary light source within the bulb in the exact center of the reflector and because of that the distribution isn't as even. You probably won't be surprised that we rate T5 lighting 10 out of 10 for the ability to provide highly diffused lighting that reduces shadowing effects, maximizes the surface of the coral exposed to light, and produces even color and growth. There just isn't another popular light source out there that does this more effectively. We also wanted to add some relevancy and visual data you can use to select or improve your own lighting, so we added measurements for 12 inches deep and 6 inches deep so you can get a general idea of exactly how wide and even the lighting pattern is. Since the fixture is 2 feet by 2 feet, you won't be surprised to see the light pattern is very diffused and covers a very wide area at almost any depth and provides an impressive amount of par. At 12 inches deep, we had a range of about 200 to 380 in the center 2 foot by 2 foot area. With the fixture 4 inches above the tank and the PAR sensors submerged 6 inches deep, there's a bit larger range between 200 and 570 PAR. Overall, T5 is a very strong diffused form of light for the reef tank. In the next couple weeks, we'll expand those charts with some various halide reflectors and LED options and share the spread patterns and diffuse light performance. Each reflector and light source performs very differently, and we're really excited to share this info with you. What this doesn't show is the full picture, which is how T5 light performs in a real tank full of corals and rock in terms of spread, dispersion, and shadows. Using a spectrometer from UPR Tech, we're able to produce some relative intensity image, which show lux intensity with a visual map combined with a photo which displays shadows. This will give you a better representation of how much surface area is actually exposed to light in something closer to a real reef tank environment. We picked up a coral insert from Living Color which allows us to demonstrate the importance of a diffused light source and effects of coral and aquascape shadowing. This is how the really popular AI Hydra 52 with 135 watts of LEDs illuminates the reef structure when positioned 12 inches above it. It does a solid job of illuminating the top of the reef structure and reaching some of the harder to reach shaded areas. The red areas represent the areas which are the most illuminated. Combined with the actual photo, you can get a pretty good idea of where the light is reaching. The 192 watt 2 foot by 2 foot grid of T5s also at 12 inches over the structure performed as you might expect. The ultra wide source of light illuminated the entire structure with almost every surface displayed as red. In fact the structure and substrate reflecting back over 260 lux which is almost four times as much light reaching the surface and being reflected back at the meter. 
You can also see the effect T5 lighting has on the upwelling light that's reflected off the bottom or substrate, which in this case is even black. It's easy to see how the ultra diffused lighting from T5s can help provide the light to the underside of your corals by reflecting off the substrate to keep them healthy and prevent tissue recession. While LEDs like the Hydra are going to outperform T5s in a whole variety of other ways, you can see diffuse light probably isn't one of them. We're going to cover the advantages of LED options like the Hydra in a couple weeks. However, by the end of this series, I think it's going to become apparent that a hybrid of technologies is likely going to produce the best results. On a side note, I have to say this coral insert from Living Color was one of the nicest I've come across, and the entire team here liked it a lot more than we thought we'd like any insert. In fact, basically everyone here said the same thing. If I were going to set up a fish-only tank, I'd absolutely get an insert from them. We also rate T5 bulbs a 10 out of 10 on spectrum provided to the corals. Parn intensity is important, but the right spectrum of light is also just as important. The Sendai is a solid option for hobbyists to use to measure the spectrum they're providing and match it to the per needs of their tank, which is that photosynthetic range useful to the corals, primarily in the blue end of the spectrum. We rate a T5 a 10 because of the plethora of bulb options out there that cover basically any spectrum you desire. The bulb options have inherently wide spectrums, and the popular brands of bulbs like ATI, Giesman, and KZ have been refined over many years with countless examples of really awesome results, so it's easy to be confident T5 is providing the proper spectrum to the corals. Just to give you a general idea of what you're looking for, we use a spectrometer from UPR Tech to produce some charts that are pretty similar to what's available by the bulb manufacturers. This is the spectrum chart provided by ATI and Giesman on a couple of their most popular bulbs and what our spectrometer provided. Just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, the red and blue portions are what is commonly considered the photosynthetic range. However, it's the blue end where most reefers believe is the most important, and the spectrum corals really thrive under, and not surprisingly why the ATI Blue Plus bulb is so popular. It's also commonly believed the green spectrum in the middle has little use to corals. However, the human eye perceives this spectrum as a brighter form of light and may be of use balancing the visual appeal of the tank. In all honesty, almost everything the hobby knows about providing the right spectrum for coral health, intense coloration in a visually appealing tank is really based on years of anecdotal experience and the cumulative successes we've all had. Even now, it's a bit of trial and error. Most of the T5 bulbs out there have already been proven by the hobby, but if you want to take this a step further as you explore the hobby, you can use a Senai Spectrum Graph to help track your changes. While it isn't as accurate as the multi-thousand dollar options out there, the Senai produced fairly similar results as the UPR tech we used, and the manufacturer provided charts, so I think it's very likely accurate enough to be a valuable tool to the average reefer who wants to get really serious about Spectrum. When evaluating visual appeal, we looked at overall color, contrast and shimmer in the tank, lighting effects and controllability, and visual appeal of the fixture itself. Overall, we gave T5 lighting a 6.6 .6 in this regard. We rated T5 a 7 in color, contrast, and shimmer. We rated it fairly high because the corals themselves are typically really colorful, have a nice shape, and look awesome under T5s. However, that ultra-diffused light source tends to give the entire tank a flat look because it illuminates the tank so well that there's very few shadows left, which eliminates contrast and sense of depth in the tank. Anyone who's ever taken a photography class understands the importance of lighter or darker areas or shadows in creating contrast in a visually interesting or appealing image. Our tanks are essentially framed glass boxes of art in our homes, and we find most of the rules about producing a visually engaging photographic image also apply to creating a visually engaging reef tank. It's possible to create that sense of depth and contrast with T5s, but it will require closer attention to aquascape design and coral placement to create those dark areas in contrast. Contrast. One missing element with T5s is the shimmer that single points of light have, like halides and LEDs. The shimmer is an effect that gives the impression of movement and that you're looking at an actual section of a natural coral reef rather than a picture of one. In terms of lighting effects and controllability, we rated T5 lighting a 5, but this is really dependent on the fixture you buy. Many people buying T5 only solutions will probably get a non-controllable option, which basically makes this a 2 or 3 in terms of controllability, meaning you can adjust the intensity and color of the light for different periods of the day, but it's typically done by just using a timer to turn some of the lights on and off at different portions of the day. Honestly, this plug-and-play simplicity is really attractive to many reefers. 
There's some controllable ballast and fixtures out there with the popular dimmable ATI Sun Power, Giesman Matrix 2 dimmable, and some retrofit options that need to be connected to an aquarium controller. As far as the visual appeal of T5 lighting fixtures themselves, we rated the options at an average of around 8, but this is really a personal preference. I personally really like the look of lighting fixtures that span the entire length of the tank. There's some fairly bland options out there, but the aluminum ATI will fit a lot of modern decors really nicely, and the texture powder-coated Giesman Matrix matrix fixture offers a level of refinement that will fit basically any decor. Honestly, in my opinion, the Giesman fixtures in general are likely the most attractive lighting options on the market, and what I would select if aesthetics in the room was my primary concern. The last component to evaluate is price versus other lighting options like halides and LEDs, which we gave it an 8. Not just initial purchase price, but the five-year cost of ownership. For that evaluation, we're going to base it on lighting a four-foot tank because that's the most popular with a new six-bulb ATI sun power fixture with bulbs is around 750 bucks, around 50 bucks more for the Giesman Matrix 2. At face value, for a complete lighting solution capable of supporting basically any type of reef tank, that's a pretty decent option and significantly less than a lot of the newer LED options. However, unlike LED options, they have bulbs that need replacement every nine months or so. Over a five-year period, it's likely you're going to have to purchase up to five sets of replacement bulbs for an additional $650 or so dollars, depending on the brand of bulbs you buy. This is about where everyone checks out because no one wants to buy bulbs, but be cautious with that concept because there isn't a lighting technology out there that does what T5 lighting does in terms of diffused full-spectrum lighting that doesn't require bulb replacement. So I think this trade-off is going to be worth it for a lot of reefers who appreciate these benefits. There are also energy costs. A four foot six bulb fixture consumes around 324 watts. An eight bulb would be around 432. In comparison, most four foot LED options are going to be between 250 and 350 watts. Here in Minnesota at 10.9 cents a kilowatt hour, a 50 watt savings on a light that's on nine hours a day would save around $14 a year or 70 bucks over five years. So there's likely some energy savings, but it's not as impressive as you might think. So if we add up our life support ratings, aesthetics, and price, T5 comes out as an average of 7.8 based on a standalone lighting solution without using any other lighting technologies in conjunction. I think when we're done, most of the lighting technologies will end up in this range, and it won't be until you combine them together that you see solutions closer to an overall 10. I mentioned at the start of this video that the single lighting technology the BRS team has witnessed the most success with is T5. However, historically, it's really a blend of lighting technologies with T5 metal halide hybrids that serve as the gold standard of aquarium lighting because it's the ideal blend of high-intensity direct lighting that provides a lot of contrast shimmer and a really sharp look supplemented with the diffused lighting T5s provide. Halides do have some advantages and disadvantages that we'll get into with next week's halide episode, but pretty much everything reefers are doing today is trying to use newer technology to emulate the successes that we had with the halide fluorescent hybrid standard. I think the closest that we've got to that to date while avoiding some of the long-term cost and heat issues associated to halides is probably the new wave of LED T5 hybrids which have hit the market. The T5 LED hybrids offer the diffusion and spectrum benefits associated with T5 combined with a shimmer, direct single point of light, and controllability benefits associated with LEDs. The major players here are currently the ATI Power Module Hybrid and the Giesman Aurora. We recently installed one of each on a couple different tanks here that were lit with LEDs only, and I have to say the results were pretty astounding. The Clownfish Harem tank now has the 8-bulb power module ATI hybrid. With LEDs only, the bubble tips survived and most look somewhat healthy, but they seem to be reducing in number over time. I wouldn't have said the tank was thriving and growing. Since adding the new hybrid lighting, the bubble tips have gone from what I would call fair health to thriving, and they now cover basically every visible space in the tank. The change was dramatic to say the least. We can only theorize why the change was so dramatic, but we believe it was a combination of that diffused even light source and providing the right spectrum lighting. I will say it's possible that the LED lighting previously wasn't tuned perfectly for the bubble tip's health and growth, but the new hybrid solution was basically plug and play and instant success. 
Jason's take was having an issue with color, growth, and some mortality associated with some shadowing. Once he switched the Giesman Aurora, the color came back and all the corals started to thrive. I have to say I find the Giesman fixture to represent the right mix of T5s and LEDs to produce that desired high contrast, attractive image combined with the diffused light corals thrive in. For those of you that already own modular LED lights and want to implement a hybrid solution like this, don't feel like you need to start all over with brand new equipment. The easiest route is just to pick up a hood for your size tank and install the modules with a couple of T5 retrofit options. Most standard tanks have hoods available or you can make one. Chris Benner made the one for the BRS-160. I personally love his work and trust him to make high quality crafted stands and hoods. If you're interested in his work, check out his site at Benner'sWoodworking.com. Before we get into some of the typical T5 installs, I'd like to share who the BRS team thinks is best served with a T5 only lighting solution. The biggest advantages to T5 is the plug and play success you can have. There's almost no learning curve and with the right T5 implementation, lighting will never be what's holding you back from having a thriving reef tank. In most cases, you don't have to deal with heat issues as well, and T5 is fairly affordable, which together makes T5 one of the best solution for newer reefers or those who don't need or want to learn how to utilize more advanced options, which can have a learning curve before you have real success. The most common install for T5 lighting is a fixture, which is suspended over the tank. There are two big brands in T5 lighting. I'll start with the Giesman Matrix 2, which is easily the most attractive fixture I've come across with the powder-coated iridium glossy black finish. This is what a 5-foot 8-bulb fixture looks like on the 6-foot BRS-160. If I were going to go with a T5 only solution, I'd be hard pressed not to use this. The Matrix 2 comes with a splash guard and active cooling with two fans mounted on the top. Most people would likely select the non-controllable version, but if you want something capable of dust to dawn effects, the Bluetooth dimmable version connects to PC and Android devices with hundreds of set points and the ability to control each pair of bulbs individually for between two and four channels, which allows for a lot of color options throughout the day as well. The Matrix also has the most mounting options with a leg option, a hanging option for the ceiling as well as mounting arms for the wall that may be easier or more desirable than drilling holes in your ceiling. The ATI Sun Power has been one of the go-to fixtures for many years because it not only looks sharp but has a focus on performance and is priced fairly. The biggest difference is ATI includes a lot more fans and is really known for keeping the bulbs cool which increases performance. Currently the only mounting option is the hanging kit but I've heard rumors of a leg mounting solution in the future. The Sun Power also has a dimmable option for slightly more and probably the most affordable dimmable option out there. Programming is done via the onboard screen with up to 10 setting points and two channels. There's a single channel for one pair of bulbs and the second channel controls all the other bulbs. There are also retrofit options if you have a hood on the tank ranging from a package of components you assemble yourself from LET, which is typically the lowest cost option and will soon be available in a slightly more expensive dimmable option. To take advantage of the dimmable functionality, the ballast has to be connected to a 0 to 10 volt port on an aquarium controller or something similar. Hamilton and Giesman also have some retrofit options which are a bit more plug and play and come pre-assembled. More or less all you need to do is screw in the mounting hardware. The Hamilton Aruba Sun places the bulbs closer together but raises the vertical footprint to do that. The Giesman Razor spaces the bulbs out a bit which reduces the maximum amount of bulbs you can install but provides a lower profile styling. Overall the Giesman Razor is the most refined looking of the bunch as well. Most people probably don't care what the retrofit kits look like, but if you're a gear junkie and the equipment has to look as sweet as the tank itself, this is it. Not surprisingly, Giesman and ATI are also the brand leaders in bulbs as well, with KZ filling in some unique needs. A lot of this is brand loyalty because there's a lot of similarities that have developed between the bulbs over the years. The one bulb that always seems to make the mix is the ATI Blue Plus, which provides an awesome mix of par and color spectrum. After that, I'd experiment with different bulbs and see what you like best. One thing about T5 is the bulb offerings have been refined so well over such a long period of time that you can have success with almost every arrangement of bulbs, so what looks visually appealing is one of the major factors. A couple tips on using T5 bulbs is they all have an 8 or so hour burn in period where it's not a good idea to dim them, so use them at 100% for a couple days if you have dimmable T5 ballast. 
Second temperature has a pretty big impact on bulbs and something a lot of reefers discuss at length. However, not many understand the entire picture. It's commonly understood that if the bulbs get too hot, performance, par output, and bulb life goes down. It's also important to note that the bulbs are too cool, performance and par goes down as well. Just to give you an idea of the performance range, we let the ATI fixture run without a fan until it's stabilized at a maximum par of 162. At this point, we turned the fan on its maximum speed to cool the fixture ballast and bulbs down, and the par rose to 280, which is absolutely a huge difference. However, at that fan speed, we were providing too much cooling, the bulbs fell below their ideal operating range, and the par started to drop. Eventually, the par stabilized at 192. Turning the fan down to half speed resulted in the bulbs getting closer to the ideal range, and we saw a par of 222. Every manufacturer touts their design features in this regard, but to be honest, on a whole, I think very few reefers are realizing these benefits the way they might think. In fact, it's almost impossible to fully realize the benefits without owning a PAR meter and making informed adjustments, which very few reefers do. Just to give you an example, the ATI fixture is considered one of the best actively cooled options out there. The air is sucked in on the top of the fixture and blown across the ballast and top of the reflectors to keep the internals cool and then vented out the ports on the far end of the fixture. The reason the ports are on the end is because some brands of bulbs use something known as cold spot technology to manage bulb performance. And in short, if you install the bulb's cold spot, which is the end with the logo on it, under the vent, the bulb will perform better. The air is then vented across the entire length of the bulb where it exits the other side. This is absolutely one of the better cooling options out there, and I can see why it's so popular. When we were exploring the cooling design and various fan settings for this video, we discovered a few things that might be helpful to owners of this fixture. The first was while the ducted approach that sends the air over the length of the bulb was one of the more effective ways to remove heat from the fixture, we noticed that the exit side of the fixture had about 15% reduction in par when compared to the entrance side. We attributed that to the fresh air effectively cooling the bulb where the air enters the bulb channel, but heating up as it travels the length of the bulb and the increasingly hot air impacts the bulb temperature and performance of the exit side of the bulb. In an attempt to confirm that concept, we removed the acrylic splash guard so the bulbs would be heated evenly. The performance did even out from left to right, which we felt confirmed our assumption. In addition to that, with the fan set to its lowest setting, which keeps fresh air passing over the underside of the reflector and ballast, we not only saw even results from left to right, we also saw the PAR matcher exceed the best performance settings we were able to obtain with any of the fan speed settings. End of the day, if you can live without the splash guard, just cooling the ballast and underside of the reflector might be the easiest way to maintain near optimal performance in many cases. However, removing the splash guard obviously increases maintenance and could reduce the lifespan of the fixture by exposing components to salt spray. Well, this information is nice to know, and we wanted to share it with the most engaged users. I wouldn't get too hung up on all this. Even with the splash guard in place and basically any fan setting, you're likely going to exceed the par ratings of some really popular halide bulbs. This is why T5 lighting is considered so foolproof and really one of the only plug-and-play lighting options out there. For those of you that want or need to optimize everything on the tank, you can pick up a standalone PAR meter like the Apogee, which is portable and convenient, or something like the Senai. Since the Senai also displays spectrum information and monitors other elements for you like ammonia, pH, and temperature, it might be a bit more attractive solution than a standalone meter. Just a couple notes on the cooling design on the Matrix 2. The Giesman fixture has two fans on the top, one in, one out, both silent. The airflow and cooling is focused on keeping the ballast and underside of the reflector cool without the ducted flow over the bulbs, so the PAR intensity is likely even over the entire length of the fixture. Similar to the ATI, you could opt to remove the splash guard, which provides that hybrid of passive and active cooling, which worked really well in our testing. Last note on cooling, if you install the fixture or retrofit kit inside a closed hood, be aware you need to vent that hood somehow, or you're just going to blow increasingly hot air back onto the already hot bulbs, and you'll impact performance significantly. Last T5 tip, the bulbs do dim over time, so there'll be a gradual decrease in PAR as the bulbs age. One way to help mitigate that effect is to change half your bulbs every four to five months, rather than all of them every nine months. So that wraps up today's focus on T5 lighting. Next week, we're gonna dive into metal halides head first and explore everything we can think of to share on this technology. You don't wanna miss it, so hit that subscribe button. If you learned something new about T5 lighting, do us a favor and let us know this information is valuable to you by hitting that thumbs up button. See you next week with week 20, metal halide lighting.